Okay, so let's talk about Arcanine being a legendary Pokemon again. As in, like, you could catch it more than once, and, it, and you actually were able to catch it, like, later on in the final version of the uh, the prototypes, the maps. Um, okay, so, well, before we knew about Mewtwo being a legendary and Mew being a legendary, um, the Pokemon company basically had, like the, like, the first four legendaries that we knew of, and this was based on that picture that we saw in the anime, there was, uh... It was um, Moltres, Zapdos, Articuno, and even uh, Arcanine. But this was right around the time when they still thought that you could go to, like, different areas and catch, like, uh, more than one legendary. You couldn't do it in the prototype, like, the way it was in the Helix Chamber hack, which is basically the closest thing I could find right now. But the concept would be, like, you would go to, like, they had, like, some of these maps that were debunked. And they even showed, like, some of the Pokemon you could catch there. But the power plant wasn't finished in the sense that Zapdos could be caught more than once. But you could see, like, you know, you could go to, like, where you could catch Moltres. Not in Victory Road, but where the Cerulean Cave originally was. And you didn't have to actually have the uh, Beat the Elite Four to get into it at this point. You could basically just go there after you had Surf. And uh, you could catch the Legendaries. And they were on, like, level 50. But the thing was, though, they weren't originally on level 50, though. In the games, though, like, if you played, like, not, not the Helix Chamber hack, but the, uh, or even the prototype, but, like, some of the prototype maps originally suggested that Nintendo was original or Game Freak was originally planning, like, you know, they might be rare encounters, but you could actually catch more than one of them in that, and they wouldn't be on level, but they'd be, like, on level 43 to level 45, depending on the area, but they would be, like, the highest level of that Pokemon in that in that regard. That explain, again, that would explain why Giovanni had all three of them in the Sylph League, and he was a flying-type trainer at one point, you know, probably because those Pokemon were supposed to be stronger, you know. I, I, I think that's really what their point they were getting at. Maybe that's why they changed it all together. Um, so, but what really got me, though, was why was it that Arcanine was considered a legendary Pokemon, but then they changed it? And what really got me, I think I... I think I might have figured it out, but there's so many other possibilities, like, what direction they wanted to take it in. I guess after, at some point, they decided maybe a legendary Pokemon should really only be limited to one, and it should be, like, a, a static encounter, where it's, like, you know, you go up to it and interact with it, and then, you know, there's Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, Mew, but uh, Arcanine, obviously had to be caught a specific way though like you had to get a Growlithe and then evolve it into an Arcanine and it would you know obviously make sense so but what's really interesting is you know Arcanine originally was probably what not only inspired the legendary dogs in gen 2 but at the same time though the concept at least and they also inspired some of the other things too like um you know maybe they wanted to have static legendaries too you know, the roaming, not, not just Roman legendaries, but like you were limited to one. Cause what's really also strange is like, you know, I think they really did it right around the time when they thought there was only one Mewtwo, because if it, if it is true with the prototype maps do suggest that professor Oak was the final boss. And then you go into another room where you'd find Mewtwo in the back room and Mewtwo had like a 1% encounter rate. And there was only one Mewtwo because Mewtwo was a man-made Pokemon. So therefore you couldn't catch more than one of them technically. Um, I don't know. I just feel like that would make a lot more sense. Like, maybe that's what they were thinking. But, I mean, I still like the concept that they could have kept with the other legendary Pokemon. You could have caught more than one legendary bird, but, like, at the same time. Because they could breed, you know. Again, you know, if anybody remembers the Pokemon anime, you know, there was that Lugia that had that, the child. And, I mean, granted, yeah, the, the, the mangas and the games are different, and as well as the anime. But, you know, but, you know, legendary Pokemon can breed, too. You know, Manaphy could breed in the Fiance, I believe. Fion, Fion, I, I, I'm always, it's French, I believe, but I'm trying to remember how they pronounce it, um, but anyways, you know, and then there were some Pokemon that, you know, you obviously could tell that they were, they were gendered Pokemon, like, you know, like Tapu Lele, for example, is always a female, Tapu Fini is always a female, has to be a female, because it looks like a female, you know, or maybe they take the deity approach, and they can basically be an it, basically, it could be anything you want it to be, right, so that's uh, another way to look at it. But I just think it's really interesting, like, how many different ways they wrote this series. Like, as far as Pokemon goes, like, there's so many different concepts that they had. And, and even to this day, you know, we still go back and think, like, how they did all this. And it just really keeps you guessing in a way. Because, like, as far as, uh, you know, 
as far as uh, Arcanine being a legendary, I mean, its stats are like what? Its base stats are like what? 550 or something like that. So like if and, and the legendary birds are like 585 or somewhere around there. So their their base stats are slightly higher, but at the same time, you know, Arcanine's not too far off with I, I mean, if, if done correctly, I'm sure Arcanine could probably take out, like, Articuno very easily, as well as, uh, you know, maybe Zapdos, too. Maybe Moltres would be a different story, because I don't think Arcanine learns any water moves. I don't think so. As strange as that sounds. Because, I mean, they did they did say before, like, you know, there were some rock Pokemon that, that might have been weak against water, but, like, they could still learn Surf, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I, I don't know if that was an error on their part, but... You know, it, it was kind of interesting, though, how uh, that how that stuff could be in it. It kind of reminds me, even in Final Fantasy V, you know, you fight Go-Go, the Mimic, and, you know, he's weak against water, but according to his stats, he absorbs water. But you're fighting him underwater, though. <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's funny. It, it really is when you think about it. Maybe it's supposed to be the joke. But, um, anyways, I, I mean, but, okay, so, as far as the Pokemon go, I mean... I would actually wouldn't be surprised that legendary Pokemon could very well have been the way they were. Because, I mean, if I remember correctly, even in the index numbers where Rhydon was the very first one, I mean, the three legendary birds came before Mewtwo. So they had the concept of the legendary birds. They had Growlithe. They, no, not, not Growlithe. They had Arcanine from the very beginning. It was one of the very first Pokemon that was ever created, but they redid it. Kind of like how Gyarados was originally a sand-looking worm. Which is really cool. Um, but I, I really honestly do think, though, that the reason why they might have changed it at that point in time is because they realized that maybe they were trying to, like, they had better ideas, too. Like, Mewtwo was, you know, once they had the idea of Mewtwo and then it was being resurrected by, like, a, you know, Mew, the, the, the fossil they found of Mew, it does make me think that there's more than one Mew, then. Or maybe Mew, it doesn't. Maybe, maybe there, it left something behind. And then they just thought it was a fossil of a Mew. But Mew, maybe, maybe it's the same Mew that's never died. Because, you know, Mew is, they never stay. Mew, Mew is basically a god, you know, in the sense that it's been around for a long time. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that makes sense. But anyways, I do think that the reason why some of these Pokemon are really, really hard to find is because they, not, not too much is known about them. Like Professor Oak stated before, you know, there's probably more Pokemon out there that haven't been discovered yet, that have yet to be discovered, but we're just still learning about them overall and we're still need to just be cautious about it. So <clears throat> you're learning something new every day. So as far as the legendary Pokemon go, who knows? Maybe there, there's more of them out there, but we just don't see them. You know, again, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Kind of like Cubone, for example, you know. We don't see it. We never see it with its mother for the most part. Unless Kangaskhan is Cubone's mother in that case. But then it makes me wonder, well, you know, how does, you know. There, there are some things in Pokemon games that, you know, they just don't show. Like Marowak is obviously, probably most likely Cubone's mother. Because, again, the Marowaks and the, and the, you know, they always stick together. But at the same time, though... You know, Kangaskhan's could be Cubone's, Cubone's, not not just Cubone, but it'd be a different, it's a different type of kangaroo, basically. So they they're, they are still connected somehow. Cubone could technically have more than one mother, depending on what kind of breed it is, and depending on if it's real mother st is still alive. I, I honestly, I do believe it's not decided by its mother, but just how it's, well, not like in the sense like how she dies, but in the sense like, you know, how they're just born. You know what I mean? So, like, Marowaks could breed with Kangaskhans, but, like, you know, obviously, Kangas, you know, Cubone wears its mother's skull, implying that it had to be Marowak, because it just makes sense. Because Cubone's skull is much more wider, and Marowak's, like, really, a skull is a lot more wider than, like, if you were to take Kangaskhans. Kangaskhans just doesn't really fit Cubone. It just doesn't seem to make sense. So, it has to be Marowak. So, anyways, but the way I look at it, I wouldn't be surprised that, that, well, as far as the Pokemon go, you know, Arcanine was probably a legendary Pokemon at one point, but they lowered its stats just a little bit, but it could still tangle with the legendary birds. So, it is still strong in that sense. But, 
I think what they really wanted to do was they just changed it over time because they started coming out with more ideas. Um, you know, so, I mean, because, again, you could still get more than one Arcanine in a Pokemon playthrough. In some games, even in the final ones, you could catch Arcanines at different, like, usually later on in the games. Or, you know, you could get a Growlithe, and as long as you can get a Firestone, you can evolve it. And as long as it's got good stats, that Arcanine's going to do you good if you're looking for a really good, strong fire type. But, you know, but here's where it gets even crazier. You know, if Arcanine really was supposed to be a legendary Pokemon, there were actual trainers that actually used, they might have been using legendary Pokemon way before N did. You know, because there's been that argument, you know, who's actually, how many trainers actually used legendaries? N was technically the first one that we know of, but if Arcanine really was originally supposed to be like a beta legendary Pokemon, but they kind of devolved it a little bit, then it would make sense because your rival had a had a, an Arcanine, chances are, and he also had a, um, I mean, hell, I think even Professor Oak used one in the beta too. Like if you fought him in the uh, Sylph Lake, he had an Arcanine, he even had a... Uh, Okay. Yeah, he did. He had Gyarados too, didn't he? Yeah, Gyarados. I, th I think Gyarados was even supposed to be even stronger. Maybe that's why they gave it a Mega Evolution later on. Um, because it was, like, supposed to be a Dragon Pokemon. But, like, they changed it in Gen 1 and they changed him to a Flying and a Water type. Kind of explains why Lance originally had one. Or even, like, that explains why, like, you know, even Charizard was originally a Dragon type. A, not a Dragon type, but, like, it was a Dragon Pokemon. But it wasn't a pure Dragon type. So for the longest time, people have always wondered, you know, how did that make sense? Well, they probably changed it. And then so later on, they gave Charizard two Mega Evolutions. One was the, its original fire and flying type. And one of them was the dragon and the flying type that we, or the fire and the dragon type, I believe, with the levitate ability, um, if I remember correctly. Um, it's just been a while. But I have to play the Pokemon ROM hacks that have the uh, the Mega Stones. I'm usually I gotta I forget how useful Charizard can be sometimes. I really I really do because when you play Pokemon ROM hacks, you gotta find those stuff all over again, and that's assuming they have Mega Stones to begin with. Um, but it's just I I just think it's really cool. Like you know, like Game Freak scrapped a lot of their concepts before, but they brought them back later on as something else, and I think that's really cool because. If that really does prove that, in a way, yeah, they the Arcanine really is still a legendary. Maybe not again that like the pseudo legendary or however you pronounce it. It's uh, he's not a pure legendary, but he's like his stats are still high enough. He's still up there, you know. But he's a very useful Pokemon if you know how to use it, especially if you are looking for like a fire type. It's pretty cool too. But I just think that as far as the legendaries go, yeah, you know, you can. Like, some trainers might have actually had Arcanines, too. Like, it was... So, even though they did have them, it would be like, you know, they were technically using legendary Pokemon, you know? But water-type Pokemon could easily take out, you know, Articuno. No, not Articuno, but, like, you could easily take out, you know, Moltres and, um... With, uh, water types. But, like, you know, even legendary Pokemon have their own weaknesses, one way or another. Even Mewtwo, the so-called most powerful Pokemon created by man never really actually, you know, wasn't really the strongest. And even when dark types were introduced, you know, you basically were able to counter their psychic types because they're immune to psychics. And then you had to use, like, fairy types and all that to get around that, or fighting types. And So when was Mewtwo a fighting type? In a, I mean, I guess if you Mega Evolve it, if, if I remember correctly, it's a fighting and a psychic type instead of it's pure psychic. I, I got to double check. It's uh, Mega Stone Evolutions. But that might also explain why, you know, you know, there was that concept of art of, like, Mew 3 that was a fake mon. And then, like, Nintendo kind of got their hands on it. And then, but it's, like, I think, like, the way, because when Mewtwo of Mega Evolves, I don't know if it's, like, it's X or Y form. But it actually, it's supposed to look like Mew, it's supposed to look like Mew, but, like, its head's a lot longer. It, it kind of looks like its head's growing a tail. But it's, uh, I, I think what they were going for was it was supposed to be kind of like one of Frieza's form from Dragon Ball Z. Because I know that Lord Beerus, and it's kind of funny because Lord Beerus was based on Mewtwo from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah dra the Dragon Ball sagas, you know, the multiple sagas. And anybody who's a Dragon Ball fan, you probably might, you, you can see the resemblance. You know, he's got his long ears. He's a god of destruction. He's, uh, you know, he was, uh, he had acquaintance, was he the one that also had acquaintance with, uh, uh, le hit the legendary assassin, the one that had the ability to time stop everything and he didn't say any more than he had to? That was actually really interesting. But, yeah, it's it's interesting how Japan's culture has, like, 
influenced other things in their culture too, you know? A lot of, like, they really, they really are tight with each other as a family. And it's really interesting because, you know, I really do think that that's what they did with uh, Arcanine as well. There was just so many things that they might have scrapped, but at the same time, there were so many concepts that they just recycled into something else. Like, because... You know, the more I think about it, if Arcanine was supposed to be a legendary at one point and it's a dog Pokemon, well, where did those concepts come from? Well, you know, Entei is another fire legend, is a pure legendary. I think its stats might even be higher, too, or maybe it's the same as Arcanine. I have to double check, but but it's, uh, you know, I, I just think that's really interesting how they decided to do that. You know, like the legendary dogs are based on, like, some of the Gen 1 legendaries concepts. So they must have had the ideas for a long time. What's even crazier is, you know, they had the concept for Raikou, Entei, and Suicune, probably in Gen 1, along with Lugia, but it wasn't, like, they had the names, but they just didn't program it, you know what I mean? Because, again, once again, like, you know, Satoshi Tajiri stated that when they were, before they even programmed Gen 1, they had, like, 300 ideas, so far, we only know of a uh, hundred, like that we've seen so far. Mind you, the index numbers are still missing from like 192 all the way up to 299. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm still trying to find those. I, I don't even know what Pokemon those are. Then I, I might have a concept for like 135 and I don't know what 121 is. And I still don't know what uh, index number uh, 182 and 183 and 184. I think it, it might have been a poison type. It might have, hell, it might have even been the Lilligan's family from, uh, or Pet a Little from Gen 5. Because I don't know, like Ken uh, Sug Sugimori, I believe is how you say it. If I remember correctly, you know, even he stated that some of the Pokemon were actually supposed to be based on Gen 1's family. So it's like, okay, so is it possible that those Pokemon could have been in Gen 1? Because there were a bunch of grass-type families that had three evolutions, and they were supposed to rival each other. Is it possible that maybe Petalittle was actually supposed to rival Gloom and Oddish and, Vol and Vileplume at one point? But, like, they decided on Bellsprout, Victory Bell, and uh, Weeping Bell at, as well. I mean, it kind of made sense. I mean, because, you know, pet a little, like, because we got to really think about it. What kind of plant is Oddish? It's a weed Pokemon. And then eventually it turns into, like, uh, it's like a, a Venus flytrap sort of Pokemon. Even though Venusaur kind of had a Venus flytrap on its back, but it was also a dinosaur that ate plants. Uh, was it, like, a herbivore? Herbivore? Her herbivore? Herbivore, I believe. Her, yeah, that, that might actually be it. Um, anyways, but I, I just think it's really interesting because it's like, you know, when you really think about it, like, the answers are, like, right in front of us. But it's like, we just need more evidence to support it, though, you know, to back it up. So, they really did recycle the ideas they had if they didn't use them, like, over time is basically it. So, Pokemon has a lot of ideas, but thank, thankfully we can just figure it out somehow, you know, one way or another. So... I think as far as Pokemon goes, that might actually be a good way to look at it because Pokemon has taught me that there are so many things in the series that we have yet to discover, but yet at the same time, there's a lot of stuff we do know about. And, and it's kind of got that realism. See, I think that's what made Pokemon Pokemon. It's like real life. You know there's more answers out there. Planets, stars, galaxies, universes, other dimensions. It's it's infinite. It's like the more you think about it, it's got it. there's always something more you're learning, but you don't know everything. You know, and it's the same thing with Pokemon. That's exactly what made that so great, you know, and that's why it worked for people. You know, some people look at that and they say, well, why is it that so many people cared about the team? Well, it, that's really it, you know, it's really as simple as it sounds. You know, they, they took a concept where, you know, you played as a character that wanted to go explore and wanted to go on their adventure through in the small details. And you had all these universal concepts that just followed through with it and it worked, <laughs> So here we are uh, years later and, you know, we're still asking these questions, you know, what they created, you know, how many ideas they might have scrapped and, you know, wow, man, I mean, you know, and, and, and what's even more wild is now that we understand some of these concepts that they weren't used in the original games, people can make their own Pokemon fire red hacks and recreate it somehow, you know. Imagine making a Pokemon game where you could catch all the legendary Pokemon more than once based on a certain location because they could be wild encounters. And it's not really that hard to do. All you have to do is go into the maps and, you know, uh, edit like the, uh, the wild Pokemon data, you know, since it's already programmed in there. 
you know? That would actually be pretty cool. Like, instead of just having, you know, like, a legendary statue, and then you can just, like, go up to it, interact, and then the Pokemon attacks multiple times. I would actually think that'd be pretty cool if somebody was just able to enable it, where, like, you know, you don't know what you're going to catch, and it, it's in a certain location, you know? So that, that would actually be very interesting, you know. Certain Pokemon can only be found in certain locations based on... But, it, but, it's, but it's golden rules, it's habitat has to make sense. Like if I went into, like, like where, where do you catch Mew at originally? Like we could find Mew maybe just hanging out in a, in a, on a, an island somewhere. Kind of like they did in the 1997 Space World demo, uh, if, if Pokemon Reforged is as accurate as I remember it. Where like you originally, like Slow King is hanging out on the beach... And it's and, you're, and I think that's kind of also where they got the idea for the movie too, you know, you because you know in Pokemon the movie two thousand there was the Slow King that basically you know told everybody you know hey you know there's this legend that's been going around you need those three orbs but like you know you have you have Slow Slow King just hanging out on the beach um, and he's giving you uh, like advice where to go find Mew because Mew like you know Mew was actually on that island somewhere and he's just you know waiting you know he's teleporting around you gotta go find him but eventually once you find Mew you know like he he, he attacks you and you can and you can fight him and catch him for like the very first time but I just think it was really cool because they never implemented that in the original gen 2 so and, and it was also really interesting because you could actually catch all those legendary Pokemon in gen 1 originally if I remember correctly you could catch them in Gen 2 as well. And and that was actually pretty interesting because if that was true, then, wow, man, we could have caught Mew. We could have caught Mew too. Could have caught the three legendary dogs. And, well, if Lugia was in there originally, um, like it should have been, then I bet you could catch Lugia too at a different location. I wouldn't be surprised because, you know, the uh, if the maps are correct, then, I mean, there was originally Whirlpool Islands in the 1997 Space World demo, but it was a lot different, though. It looked a lot different. So if that is true, then maybe Lugia was originally supposed to be planned for the game. And that's another video I'm going to have to look into. I'm going to dig into this, right, and I'm going to prove that, yes, Lugia was a concept but it wasn't designed until later on. That's probably what they decided to do because they had the ideas. They had the movie in production, but they just didn't release it to the public until 1999, right around the time when the final version of Pokemon Gold and Silver came out. So they had to have had the idea for the longest time. It just makes sense when you think about it. Um, as far as Pokemon goes, there's just tons of things that they had. There's so many concept arts. There's so many different ideas. And yet at the same time, though, there's just so many of them waiting to be discovered. And it's like the more we dig into it, the more we have to tell people about it that actually care about the series, of course. And that's what I want to do, you know. I just find it interesting. So, again, subscribe if you're not. Um, support me on Patreon if you want to. You don't have to. Um, and I'll just keep making videos. So if I find anything else, I'll let you know. But if I had to say Arcanine being a legendary Pokemon that actually inspired the legendary dogs too, I would still stand by that. But at the same time though, I think Arcanine is actual proof of two things, at least. Is that it originally was supposed to be caught more than once in different locations, depending on the area, of course. And you could still evolve it with a Growlithe. So that's even better. But it's also even more interesting that if Growlithe, if, if uh, Arcanine was originally a legendary Pokemon before they started adding like all the stuff to it that we know of, then that's proof that even other trainers would have had Gra uh, Arcanine and it would have been a legendary Pokemon. So other people were using legendary Pokemon even in Gen 1. That's very interesting to think about. Kind of like how Lance uses a lot of dragons like that aren't legendary Pokemon, but they're strong though. Like Dragonite and, you know, maybe kind of makes you think, you know, was Gyarados and Charizard supposed to be legendaries in a way? Sort of. Even, But I think the reason, I think Charizard's a lot more explanatory because, you know, it's a starter. So they had to kind of balance it out a little bit. Otherwise, Charizard would be like the hardest Pokemon to really raise. And you'd have to get smart about like maybe raising Charmander all the way up to like level 36 before evolving it. Or Charizard. But I think that's why they decided to give it a, a, a Omega Stones. Oh, not Omega Stones. Mega Stones. 
because they thought that would probably be the easiest way to keep this balance, sort of, you know, so that way you could still evolve Charizard with different stats, and it could still be, you know, sort of a dragon Pokemon, because it's a, a salamander, it's a, it's not a flying dragon yet. It kind of takes, it's like it takes the approach of a Bagon. Dreams of flying, becomes a Salamance after it evolves from a Sheldon, and it eventually becomes, you know, it, it's able to finally grow a pair of wings. It's finally able to, you know, it's a fully adult dragon, basically. Except instead of it being a fire type, it's a flying and a dragon type. So that's actually pretty cool, actually, when you think about it.